everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. This is Mr. Kite talking to you. We're continuing on in our series about energy with glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Should be a pretty easy video, maybe. We'll see. But as always, we're going to go ahead and start out with our objectives for the day. There are three of them, and they are as follows. So first of all, describe the reactants, process, and products of glycolysis. Same thing for the Krebs cycle. And finally, understand the role of NAD plus in energy harvest. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road for our talk today. So we're going to go ahead and start out with glycolysis. And this is something that you might remember vaguely from your regular biology class. We're going to go ahead and add some more detail to it. But first, an overview. So the first thing you need to know is it begins the oxidation of glucose. So if you remember from one of our past videos, oxidation is where you are stripping electrons off something. And every time you strip electrons off of something, it gives up some energy. So this whole process of cellular respiration, especially glycolysis and Krebs, the purpose of that is to oxidize glucose all the way down into water and carbon dioxide. So we're going from a big old unstable molecule to two smaller stable molecules. And along the road, we're getting some energy out. This happens in two phases. We'll talk about each of them in a moment. But in one phase, you're investing energy. In the other, you're getting out energy. It occurs in the cytoplasm, so locationally in the cell, its address is the cytoplasm. It's not inside any of the organelles. And finally, this is an anaerobic process. So it's going to happen whether there is oxygen or not, and that's going to be different from the other processes of cellular respiration that we're going to talk about. So remember, glycolysis can happen whether or not there is oxygen. So phase one in glycolysis is our energy investment phase. And if you remember back to one of our former videos, we had to talk about activation energy, which is kind of like the energy you need to destabilize a molecule such that it is ready to start breaking down. So for glycolysis, we start out with glucose. And in this first stage, we are going to add two ATP molecules. So we are investing a little bit of energy. What those guys are used for is each ATP sticks a phosphate onto the glucose. Hooked on phosphates make our glucose unstable and it makes him want to react. So the purpose of putting those on is to destabilize him. Once he is destabilized, he will go through a couple of different intermediate molecules and eventually get to two, three carbon molecules that are going to continue on through the rest of glycolysis. So first phase of glycolysis, just remember you are spending two ATPs to destabilize glucose and to get it to break down into our two three carbon molecules that are going to go through the rest of the process. In phase two, we actually start making some energy that the body can use. So in this phase, our molecule has broken down. We've got those two three carbon molecules that I just talked about. Each one of those three carbon molecules still has a phosphate hooked onto him. As these guys progress through, and glycolysis itself is actually like 10 steps long, don't have to know them, just know the overview. Each one of these molecules is going to proceed through the remainder of glycolysis. From each of the molecules, you get the following things. An NADH molecule is made, two ATP molecules are made. So you're going to get back the ATP you spent plus some. You're also going to get some NADH, which is going to carry a high energy electron on off to the electron transport chain. The way that happens is as this molecule is going through its various transition states, one of those states is a molecule that has an electron to give up. So when it gives up its electron, NAD plus picks up that electron. It also attaches a hydrogen. It's going to take that high energy electron and the hydrogen over to the electron transport chain, which we will talk about later. When it comes to cellular respiration, so it's always good to talk about the results when we're talking about glycolysis. So they are as follows. First, you get one glucose molecule that enters the process. In the first stage, that energy utilization stage, you use up two ATPs. Coming out of glycolysis, kind of the finished product, is a molecule called pyruvate. You get two pyruvate molecules that come out at the end. The process forms four ATPs total and two NADHs, which are going to carry high energy electrons on over to the electron transport chain. Now, this whole process of cellular respiration is a linked cycle. So those two pyruvates that come out of glycolysis are going to travel on over to the Krebs cycle. But first, a quick overview on Krebs. 
Know that it is also known as the citric acid cycle. I guess have students get that confused all the time. Krebs, citric acid cycle, same thing. It receives the pyruvate that is coming over from glycolysis. It occurs in the mitochondria. So its address is actually inside the organelle, the mitochondria. And last, and this is really important, this is a, an aerobic process. So the Krebs cycle does not happen unless there is oxygen present. Before we begin the Krebs cycle, our pyruvate needs a little bit of rearranging. It goes from being pyruvate to a molecule called acetyl-CoA. So here's a pyruvate that has just come over to us from glycolysis. It's going to go through some working on, or it's going to get worked on by some enzymes. In the process of that happening, a couple things are going to be given off. You're going to get CO2. This would be some of the CO2 that you breathe out when you exhale. You also get an NADH molecule. That NADH molecule is carrying one of those high energy electrons over to the electron transport chain. Pyruvate itself cannot enter into the mitochondria, so it has to be changed into acetyl CoA first. This is kind of like its club card that gets it inside. Once we have converted our pyruvate to acetyl CoA, we can drop it into the Krebs cycle. Now, once upon a time, AP Bio students had to know all the nasty little steps of the Krebs cycle. Don't need that to know, don't need to know all that anymore. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Know that it is a cycle because the first molecule right here gets changed into about eight or ten different molecules along the way and finally regenerated. So the first step uses a molecule called oxaloacetate. The last step regenerates oxaloacetate so it can keep going in a circle. In the process of acetyl-CoA running through this cycle, we get more carbon dioxide being given off we get three more NADH molecules, each one carrying a high energy electron off to the electron transport chain. We get one ATP that is immediately ready for usage in the body, and we get FADH2, who is a cousin of NADH. He also carries high energy electrons. Once the Krebs cycle is complete, our glucose molecule has been fully oxidized. It is now nothing more than water and carbon dioxide. All of the energy that was contained in it is being carried off to the electron transport chain or it's already been given off as ATP for the, for the body to use. Our results of the Krebs cycle, you get one pyruvate entering, it gets converted to acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle where it will be fully oxidized. Out you get two carbon dioxides, you get four NADHs, that includes the NADH given off in our conversion to acetyl-CoA. You get one ATP molecule made that is directly useful in the body, and you get one FADH2 who is carrying one of those high energy electrons. Let's wrap up our day today by talking about NAD+. He's going to be a big deal when we talk about the electron transport chain. Just think of him like this. He is a taxi cab for high energy electrons. So in the process of oxidizing glucose all the way down to carbon dioxide and water, high energy electrons were being given off. Every time one of those high energy electrons was given off, our NAD plus, our NAD plus, he picked up an electron and he also picked up a hydrogen. Our result is Na. DH. This NADH is going to carry that high energy electron, taxi cab style, on over to the electron transport chain where that electron will be used to do work. But that's a whole other video. We will talk about it another time. Just to kind of finish up, I want to give you one last recap so that you can keep all of this straight. Aerobic versus anaerobic. Glycolysis is an aerobic process, or an anaerobic process, forgive me. So glycolysis can happen without oxygen around. But the Krebs cycle is aerobic. It only happens if there is oxygen. Energy investment versus energy payouts. In the first stage, that first half of glycolysis, we spend two ATPs. But as we go through the rest of glycolysis and then the Krebs cycle, we end up, we end up replacing those two ATPs plus some extras. Each of those ATPs made in the process of glycolysis and Krebs go out and they're used by the body immediately. Our total for both processes together are 5 ATPs made, 6 NADH, and 1 FADH2. With all of that being said, I think that just about covers our quick intro to glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you'll join us again on the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you, and have a good day.